In today's video, we're going to be creating a RAG application with AutoGen. Okay, and now let's meet the agents. We're going to have two of them. We have a RAG agent and a user agent. And I know this seems simple, but the RAG agent has a lot going on, which we're going to go over in just a minute. And because this is a RAG application, we do need to choose a vector database for our RAG agent. And the one we're going to choose is Chroma. And one of the reasons I am choosing this is because recently with the updated Chroma version, there have been some issues integrating with AutoGen. So I have that working and I'll explain the fixes in case you haven't. And here Here's an example of the code for the RAG agent, but in AutoGen terms, it's called Retrieve User Proxy Agent. So we can give it a name, the human input mode, which we have seen before. This can be always, never terminate. We actually, I don't want to be a part of this conversation, so I'm going to set it to never. And the big thing here, well, a couple of things here that you really need to know are the retrieve configuration. And it has a task and a doc, docs path. Well, there's some more in there, but these are the two main ones. So the task is, is this going to be a question answer problem or is this going to be something that's going to have to code to figure out the solution for? There's also a default, which will then let the agent decide whether it needs to code or this is just a simple Q and A problem. And the docs path, this is where we want to hold the documents that we're going to use for our agent to insert into the vector database so it can also retrieve from. You can choose your embedding function. And for the context max tokens, I have this in red because I actually ran into this issue. I had a PDF that was about 3.8 megabytes in size, but because it was so big, it couldn't actually use that as context when it was trying to, when I was trying to answer a question from that, from the PDF. So I had to figure out that you need to set the max token tier to be much larger. Okay, so I have this set up already and we're gonna kind of review all the code uh, because it's a little bit to just type out line by line. So let's go ahead and review this. And again, this will be on my GitHub, but I just created a Python file. There are some imports, but before we do that, you do need to install pip install pi autogen retrieve chat. And actually this, um, we need quotes around this. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna also, uh, it's gonna also install the chroma, like all the embedding functions and uh, the actual pro user proxy agent that we need for the RAG application. So go ahead and run this and then we'll be back. All right, so these are all the imports that we need. So we need the chroma DB, autogen, and then we can import the specific agents. And then this is one that you will not see in the example online. This is the chroma vector DB. This is um, the actual database that we're gonna be using to change how the chroma works because by default it doesn't if you're using, uh, uh, not using an older version of Chroma. Well, if you just did the install the way I did, you're gonna be using an updated version of Chroma and you need to do it this way. So I created a config list and which means I need a config list, OAI config list.json file. So over here in my RAG Chroma project, I created one right here. And this, what you can do is you can use either LM Studio, you can use Phi um, from Olama, or you can straight up use an open AI model and then you would need to get the API key here as well. But this is ready for you whenever you want to use it. Now, when we go back, once that's done, there are a couple things we need. We need the Chroma database path where we're going to store the database and then the name of a collection. You can name this whatever you want. By default, there is already one. I think it's autogen-docs. I could be wrong, but there is one by default. So, but I want to create a new one. And then this is where it's a little different, especially if you're looking at the example they have. Uh, this is creating a Chroma client, okay? So we're actually gonna create the Chroma database ourselves. We're going to, uh, this is the get or create where we're actually create the collection. So now we have the collection and the Chroma client, and then we need our embedding function, right? We're, you do, you, there is one by default, but I don't want to use the default one. I kind of want to use, um, try out the open AI one. It does seem to work great, but there's also others uh, such as Olama and Hugging Face uh, embedding functions. We can look them up and you know let me know in the comments if you want to know what they are. Uh, but for this one, I use the open AI embeddings. So once we have this, now we create our vector database given the Chroma vector DB uh, backend that we uh, instantiated or imported above, we give the path to the Chroma database and then the embedding function. Of course, now it knows that if there is no Chroma database yet, it's going to create it. Now we move on to creating our assistants. The first one is just the regular assistant agent. There's nothing really special here. Um, we just have the name, system message, and the LLM config. And the LLM config, of course, is whichever one you want to choose from Olama, LLM Studio, or OpenAI. Now for the, the code for the actual Chroma collection, you know, we did see this already in the slideshow, but just as a quick review, most of this is the same, right? I'm going to show you how to use Q and A for your RAG application. And 
instead of having the docs path just yet, I kind of want to show you the output, how it works, and then I'll import uh, another PDF and then we'll see, uh, then we'll see it adding more chunks so we can actually ask it a question. So this is just a readme. This is the raw uh, readme from Autogen. And then we'll ask uh, it a question from there. So it's going to create chunks based off of this. And the chunk size is going to be here. We can change this to whatever we would like. Uh, and for the config list, this is you know an indice for integer indice. So this is going to be actually using open AI. But you can change it to 0 or 1, whether you want to use LM Studio or Olama. So the vector database we're going to use, we create up here is the Chroma vector database. Then uh, we don't want to overwrite anything. Uh, we um, we want to reuse an existing collection when we create it. This is the name of it. This is the embedding function in the context max token, max tokens. And you may actually need to increase those depending on your PDF sizes or, or your document sizes. And now we can go into our actual problem or example that we want to ask because this is a rag application. Um, and the this is going to be asking me about Autogen. So I said, what is Autogen? Please give me a detailed overview of the project. Now to initiate the chat, we say this is from the RAG proxy agent, right? Because this is a user proxy agent, OK? So we're going to have the user initiate the chat with the assistant. And we have a message generator from the uh, RAG proxy agent. The actual problem, you know, this is a Q&A problem, and the number of results we want to return is 2. And what I have here is it didn't. Uh, first off, if you don't have any results, it never printed, it never returned anything for me. So I, you have to have some sort of number here for the end results. And this if statement right here, um, I kind of, you know, depending on whether it's code, QA, uh, it can either up, it can return that that's updating the context also. And if it does that, you can't just retrieve the last message. So what this is doing, and I actually put this through AI, so I gave it an example and told it what I needed, and this is kind of the code it came up with. Um, but this is going to give you the correct uh, output. So let's run this. If we go into our, we're going to, And this one lets you know that this will be in my GitHub. I have a readme there. If you have any questions, try to follow that. But if not, go ahead and leave a comment section or join my Discord to ask me any personal questions about it. OK, now let's go and run this. I am in the correct folder. So I'm going to say python rag underscore one dot py. And there's going to be a few things going to happen here, right? It's going to create the collection. It's going to try to create the collection. And whenever it does, there will be a temporary folder over here. So it created it right there. So it's using. When it says using the, sorry, let's come up here. When it's using the existing collection Autogen Rag Chroma, it's because it created it. It found three chunks that it's going to use or that's um, that's going to insert into the vector database. And then the vector database returned two document IDs. So it found two different um, you know pieces of content of those documents to add as context to answer the question. So here is kind of the prompt from the Rag proxy agent, right? So the user agent is talking to the assistant that you're a chatbot. The user's question is, what is Autogen? Please give a detailed overview of the project. Now, the readme, you know, it's a readme. So it does, you know, it does look like this, right? So uh, here is some details about Autogen. And it's going to, this is basically the context from the readme that we got from Autogen's GitHub, right? This is just, this is just raw, it's just raw uh, information. So that's the context. And then to print it out, Autogen is an open source framework to facilitate creation of the, facilitate the creation of AI agents and so forth, right? Um, and it was created collaboratively, collaboratively by Microsoft, Penn State, and University of Washington. Great, that worked, right? It wouldn't have known what the Autogen framework is without giving this context. And to kind of prove that point, let's clear this and try this again, um, except this time, what is Autogen Studio? And it's not going to have any idea what Autogen Studio is. So let's try and uh, ask it this question um, and see what it gives us. OK, so let's see what OK, let's see what happened here. That kind of just happened quickly. Um, but it, I just this is just a print statement, but it found the existing collection, right? It thinks it found three chunks related to Autogen Studio. But really, it's just because it's Autogen in the name. Probably it, it returned um, Kind of context or chunks to try and help solve this problem or uh, you know answer the problem. But what is Autogen Studio? And so here is the context, right? This is basically probably the same context. It looks like there might be a little bit more, but this is probably just the same context uh, that we had. However, 
the assistant returned update context. Now, what does that mean? Well, what happens is if, if Autogen doesn't know what to do or can't find the answer, it just returns update context. And whenever it did that, it's trying to update the context and reset the conversation, meaning that maybe it didn't get the correct context from whatever we have in the vector database. And so now what it's trying to do is it's trying to add content to hopefully help fix whatever it needs as the context to solve the problem. What it's trying to do here is trying to return other document IDs and add them as context in order to maybe solve the problem, right? So we ask the same question again, please give a detailed overview of the project of Autogen Studio. And this looks like it's, this is different uh, chunks of the documents that the document, the readme that we gave it. And it just returned update context again, meaning it still doesn't have any idea how to answer this question. And then what's basically happening is because there's no more context for it to really get, it's just terminating. And so it does. And what I've done here is back in the rag proxy agent, I've just added in the docs path, you can just give it a folder path, right? You can either give it specific uh, files or you can add folder paths. And what I'm doing here is just adding a folder path. Now, anything that I put over here in this project under the docs uh, folder, it's going to, whenever this runs, it's going to take that and add that into the vector database. And this time, whenever it, when we run this, it's going to take the PDF from here, or you could have multiple in there, right? And it's going to add those chunks into the vector database, which it's trying to do right now. So I've taken a second. Uh, max tokens, it's trying to break. Okay, so it's kind of breaking everything down. Um, it returned. Okay, so this is part of the PDF, right? Let's scroll. I'm sorry, let's scroll back up here. Um, so it added vector database. So these are different document IDs. So it added these you know, chunks, of the uh, content chunks as context in order to answer the question, right? So it actually found 11 chunks, you know, before it just found three, but now here it found 11, which is from the PDF. So if we scroll down, it should at some point answer this question. So it says Autogen Studio is a no-code developer tool designed for building and debugging multi-agent systems efficiently, developed by uh, Microsoft Research, supports rapid prototyping, developer tooling, blah, blah, blah. Okay, and this is great. It now took, it was able to take the correct context because we added the proper documents to give to it, and then it knew to answer the question. But before, because it actually couldn't answer the question, it didn't. And that's what we want. We don't, It. this is going to help with the hallucinations. We don't want to just give us some answer because it thinks it's close enough. No, we want it to be accurate as possible. If you would like to see group chat with RAG or other types of vector databases, such as I mentioned before, PG Vector or Quadrant, let me know in the comments section below, and I will create tutorials on those as well. Here are some more videos on Autogen. In the meantime, I'll see you next video.